All right, so we're back with another video. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and call that permissions endpoint that we just created from the Next.js app. Now, keep in mind that we are going to need to call it before it actually reaches the page and does all of the uh, pre-rendering. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use a middleware for this. OK, you could actually use the get server side props function to do this, but I think using the middleware would be just fine. One thing that I will mention is that we are going to need to make an API call. And if you try to use Axios inside of middleware, you're going to run into an adapter issue like adapter is not a function error. So inside that middleware, we're actually going to use fetch to make the API call. OK, and you'll see in a second. So let's go inside our dashboard. Uh, let's go inside our dashboard project. Let's go inside the ID folder. OK, so inside pages dashboard ID. We'll create a new file called underscore middleware.ts. And we're going to export an asynchronous function called middleware. And keep in mind, this is a named export, not a default export. And this middleware function is going to take in two parameters. It's going to take in a request, which is going to be of type next request. And then it's going to take in the next fetch event type. So now what I can do is I can just write any logic I want. I'll just go ahead and write middleware function. All right. And if I were to, if I were to visit any of these routes inside the ID folder, it's going to go ahead and invoke the middleware function for us. So for example, I just visited this dashboard page, right? You can see that it invoked the middleware function. If I go to any other page, such as commands page, it's going to go ahead and call that middleware function. And if I go to the settings page, it will call that middleware function. Now to actually get the route parameter, so the guild ID, we can actually just grab that from the request.page.params object. So whatever value is currently passing for the route ID, is going to be logged in the console. You can see that it's being logged right over here. Okay, perfect. All right, so what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to create a function to call the API and we're gonna pass in that ID, but we also need to do a couple things before we need to validate the cookies uh, because if the user doesn't have a cookie, then that request should not go through. Uh, and also if uh, and also uh, the API that we implemented also is protected. So we must pass the cookies because it, because Next.js is not going to do that for us because it doesn't know where to get the cookies from. Okay, because remember it runs on the server side. Now, one thing that I also will mention is that we can't use Axios inside the middleware function because if we try to do that, it's going to give us an error. So a workaround is we're just going to use fetch. Okay, we're going to use the fetch API instead. Okay. So what we're going to do is this. I'm going to go ahead and inside this middleware function, let me create a function called validate middleware cookies. And I'll actually export this later so we can import this wherever we want. So that way we can reuse it on other middleware functions if we need to. And it's just going to take in this request object. OK. And we're basically going to copy and paste the same logic that we had inside this valley cookies function. It's the same exact thing. The only difference is that instead of referencing the context, we're re referencing request. Now you're probably wondering, well, why can't we just reuse that same function? Well, I could try to, but the problem here is that this request property is not even in its actual own type. It's actually a type of incoming message joined with cookies. So it would be quite annoying to to get it to work the way that we want it to. So just to make things simple, I'm just going to create a completely different function that is just going to take care of middleware or take care of a, a next request types. OK, so all it does is it grabs request.cookies because it has this property called cookies. And we're going to grab the connect sit, which is the name of the, which is the name of the session ID, right? Uh, or the name of the cookie. And then we're going to go ahead and return this object which is what we're going to pass in for the headers if the session ID is actually present. And if it's not, we're just going to return false. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go ahead and call this function. 
Okay, and if there is no headers, we're going to go ahead and return, or actually, I should say this, if it returns false, right? So if not false, so basically if there is no cookie that's present in the client or in the browser, we're actually just going to go ahead and return a response. So we can actually do that by returning next response dot, and we can actually call a bunch of different methods. So the method that we're going to call is redirect. And we'll actually just redirect the user back to the home page. Because this, this just means that the user is not authenticated. Okay. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we have to check to see if uh, rec.page.params. We'll, we'll actually do the same thing. Uh, so if there's no, because if there's no parameters, because this could possibly be undefined, right? So if it is, we'll go ahead and return the user back to the menu page. Okay. So I can actually just do this. Uh, whoops. Hold on. Let me cut that and let me just do no headers or no params will return back to the will return back to the main page. Okay. Well, actually, you know what? Actually, no, this is quite different, actually. So I'll leave, I'll leave it like this. Okay. So now if there are params, let's go ahead and grab the ID from it. Okay. And now let's go ahead and implement the function uh, to call the URL. So let's go into api.ts. Let's go and create a function called, let's call this fetch valid yield. And this will take in two parameters. Okay, so it's going to take in the headers. It's going to also take in the the ID. Okay, so let me go ahead and do this real quick. I'm going to go ahead and call fetch. Let's pass in the API URL. And the URL, the full URL will be slash guilds, the ID of the guild, and then slash permissions. And then for the headers, I'm trying to see what the type of the headers is. Uh, I think it's just called header. I think the type is headers init. So that way I can properly type annotate. Uh, that way I can that way I can probably type annotate the actual headers itself. Let me pass in the ID first, and then the headers. All right, so let's go ahead and call this function. But before we do that, let's return response.json. Okay. So let's see. Let's go inside our middleware function. Let's go ahead and call fetch valid guild, pass in the ID, and then pass in headers. And let's go ahead and console log what the response is. And let's refresh the page. And let's see what was going on here. It says invalid response body. So it's, give us back this error message. Uh, let's see. It says we are being rate limited. Interesting. Let me try again. So let's refresh. So let's see, we're getting an error back. So I'm quite interested to see what the error is. This is invalid JSON response. Uh, let me see. Can we console log response and see what, what is being returned? Okay, so it is giving us back a forbidden. So I think maybe that's the reason why. Okay, that's fine. We actually don't even need to return the response.json. We just need to return response. Because remember, we only need to we only care about honestly, we only really care about the actual status. Right? So if I refresh, I, I only care about the status, right? And you can see that right now it's giving us back a 403, which 
definitely makes sense because one, two, three is not a valid guild. So let's go back and let's try selecting the BMW server and let's see what the status code is. You can see that it says 200. Okay, so that's great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to our code and inside the middleware function, we'll just say if the response status is not equal to 200, we're gonna go ahead and return next response dot redirect. We'll redirect to the menu page. Okay, and actually I'll use the turn operator. So if response dot status equals is not equal to 200, okay, we will redirect to the menu page. And if it is 200 though, right? Well, actually, let me do this. Let me actually, this is so weird. Let me do, if it is equal to 200, We'll read or we'll uh, we'll we'll do this. We'll do next dot next response, and we'll call it next. So that'll just call the next function, which is really just going to go to the page, okay? And if it's not equal to two hundred, we'll do next response dot redirect back to the home page. I'll do actually I'll do menu page instead. Okay, so let's test out our logic. So let's go to one two three. Uh, let's see, should have brought me back to the menu page. It says I am being rate limited. Oh, I see. So what happened was it... Okay, so I see what happened. It fetched all of the guilds, right? Because remember, when we call the API to get all of the valid guilds, right? We're calling the Discord API. But then it redirects us to the menu page, uh, which is going to call the API again. So it actually rate limits us again. So it's going to bring us back to the home page. So that's not actually good. So instead of redirecting to the menu page, because uh, like I said, it's just going to make yet another API call and we're going to get rate limited. That's why we, that's why you saw that we got rate limited earlier. Uh, I'm, I'll just, you know, we, we can just redirect to like a custom 404 page. Um, or you could just like, yeah, I think it'd be better to just, you know, redirect to like a 404 page. Uh, and just tell the user, hey, look, you know, that uh, that page that you try to access does not exist. So you can just do something like, you know, redirect and then just pass in like that URL. Um, so what you can do is you can actually create, you can also create like a custom for for page two if you want to. Um, but, you know, for now, I'll just I'll just let it redirect to the home page. OK, and actually, that's what a lot of dashboards do. It, it just redirects the user back to the home page. So I think I think we'll leave it like this instead of redirecting to the menu page, because, again, we don't want to make too many API calls. OK, unless we were caching, then that's a different story. But we're not doing that right now, obviously. OK, so, uh, yeah, so we'll just redirect to the main page. So if I go ahead and try to access slash dashboard, uh, that route doesn't exist, obviously, but if I go to one, two, three, four, it's going to redirect me back to the home page. Let's try to go to menu. So menu will work. Let's select a guild. Good. So I'm able to visit this guild. Okay, great. Great. So our middleware function should be invoked. Okay, refresh. Perfect. All right, and then if I try to go to the other pages, it'll work fine. And if I try to visit a guild that just doesn't exist or, you know, someone else's guild, it's going to redirect me here. Obviously, you can, again, you can manually redirect to like a custom 404 page if you want to, but I'll let you all take care of that. But I just wanted to show you all how to protect the pages from being accessible for guilds that the user's not in. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.